we are back at you guys once again with yet a brand new podcast for you people tonight. And uh, this time around, I figured, you know, it, it just kind of hit me out of the blue, and I think this would be interesting. Let's yes, sir. let's start off talking about um, movies that we last watched, like say the last two films, you know. Okay. And then after that, we're going to be answering uh, some questions here from another YouTuber, uh, Daniel Santana, which uh, there's some really good ones right. here that we have. And uh, so, with that being said, let's get this bitch going. All right. Um, so let me ask you. What's up? What um what are what are some of the last films that you watched lately? Hmm. Well, the last film that, I, that I've seen that I've never watched before that I checked out was a movie called Baby Driver. Baby Driver. Yeah, that one I haven't seen. Was it any good? Yeah, it was just like your corny, like Fast and Furious type movie, like this young kid who's got like sunglasses and always listen to music somehow he's just like the world's greatest fucking driver could get in and out it's like dude nobody's that fucking good as a driver <laughs> yeah but, only in the movies as they say yeah right yeah, but I mean, it did have a pretty good cast in there like uh kevin spacey played in it uh they had um jamie fox jamie fox was a fucking madman in that movie oh kick ass yeah He's, they send him into a store to get some supplies for the road, and he comes back. And it's like he's like he tells the guy in the back seat, he's like, "Do you want anything?" He's like, "Yeah, give me some gum." He's like, "All right." He comes back with a whole the whole fucking gum display, and just throws it all in there. Like, there she comes. Like, hey, it's like, hey, what? I wasn't paying for that shit. <laughs> and they they look back, and he's fucking like executed the fucking the the store person and just took the, the money and whatever the fuck he wanted. <laughs> Damn. That's, like, that's, that's crazy. It's like, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty crazy. That was crazy. And then, um, the one I watched after that, uh, I watched a good old classic, uh, Any Which Way You Can with uh, Clint Eastwood. Oh, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen that one in a long time. Yeah, I was just... I was going through Netflix the other night, and that popped up, and I was like, "Oh shit!" You know, I haven't seen this in a long time, and yeah, didn't that and, that came uh, out in like the seventies, didn't it? I think the any which way you can came out in the eighties. Like oh, okay. uh, the first one was every which way but loose. No. I think that came out in the late seventies, and okay, gotcha. Yeah, but well, it was pretty cool. I had I had a. Uh, I liked the, the fact that, you know, in every which way but loose, like all the fights that Clint Eastwood had, he, he like, he dominated every fight. Right, yeah. right. But, but in this one, like, the fighter that he was going to fight was just as good as he was, if not better. And the problem is, like, they were friends. Like, and there's a funny scene where they're sitting at a bar talking and you know listening to his uh Clint Eastwood's girlfriend's uh Sandra Locke singing and and her she finishes her song all of a sudden this guy in front of them yells out it's like hey why don't you get someone that can sing around here <laughs> and and the one guy tells him he's like hey um that's not polite and he's like the guy gets up he's like oh complaint department's open now sonny <laughs> and, and, and he winds up socking the guy to where Clint Eastwood jumps in, starts beating the fuck out of everybody, and the guy is just like sitting there watching him, like impressed, like, damn, he is pretty damn good. Yeah. And then he beats the guys up for a while, then one of the guys like pulls out a knife, which the one guy sees, and he jumps in and like takes it from there, and Clint Eastwood watches him like beat the fuck out of these guys and and afterwards they're all sitting there like okay you play a hell of a game of squash yeah they got the I don't know if it's still on there but I remember seeing that fight scene on uh, YouTube mm -hmm. which is pretty cool um, yeah I liked how it was edited and uh, how the, the camera angles and all that were on that like fight the, scene yeah I like the fact they beat the shit out of these guys it's like they both showed off what they could do 
Mm. And um, and and even Clint Eastwood asks him. He looks over, and goes, hey, "Did you find uh, you find out what you want to know?" And he's like, "Yeah, I did." You're fast and you like pain. <laughs> you, like candy, you like candy. Yeah, that's like, pretty cool. Like, let's call this fight off. There's no point to it. I'm not doing it for points. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so those are, you know, good movie. Yeah, especially with Clyde the orangutan. I like how in the first one, he was just more of like a sidekick to Clint Eastwood. But then... um and any which way you can like they were like he was actually like scrapping cars for him and yeah. they'd tell him like Clyde scrap the Merc and he just would like just start tearing the pieces off the cars and throwing them and heck yeah that was pretty funny hell yeah I think the the last films that I was watching um lately was the uh Sonny Chiba Street Fighter films Okay. And those were those are films from the seventies where he's going around. You know, these are Japanese martial art films. He's going around kicking everyone's yeah. ass and killing motherfuckers. Oh, you yeah. know, in these films, which are pretty badass. You know, yeah. it's a it's a cool series to have, if, especially if you're into you know martial art movies. You know. Yeah. I'm. Not, I, I would say this. Like, I'm not like. Yeah, I've never really been a big fan of the martial art movies. Like, I know you've always been, and yeah. I've watched some with you. And Yeah, you're more into the wrestling. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just involved. Well, I mean, there's, like, wrestling, um, horror movies. Right. Like, you know, I like action movies. I like anything that has to do with cars. Right. And, you know, like, funny-ass movies. Like, uh, take one, for example, one of the good old classics, uh, Grandma's Boy. That film, I love that film. Yeah, that movie, like, if you want to see a movie that'll just make you laugh from, like, even, like, right from the beginning of it, like, that funny scene where they're fucking playing the video game, and he's, like, he's beating his buddy's ass, and his buddy tries to, like, hey, man, let me get a bong hit for round two. Right. And he says, and why he's why he's not paying attention? The guy goes up and unplugs his remote, and starts yeah. round two, and starts. He's like, <laughs> "Hey, hey, I smell the bomb! Stop!" <laughs> yeah, I remember when that first hit. Like, um, I believe it hit the theaters. Um, okay. I'm not sure if I seen it at the theaters or not, but I remember I got it uh, probably right away when it hit DVD, somewhere yeah, somewhere yeah. in like 2006, 2007. Yeah, and I remember watching that, thinking, "Man, I cannot wait." Yeah, you know, yeah, to get really my bad. friends to watch this shit. Not just you, yeah, but yeah. my buddy Butch and my other buddy named Ken too. I, I told him, I said, "Look, uh, you yeah, guys, was, you guys got to watch this film because it's fucking yeah. hilarious." And we all love video games, and this is a movie yeah, about it's video like games. Guy, well, to me, it's like it was awesome. The guy had the perfect job, like. Yeah. He could just sit around, and, you know, get stoned and play video games all yeah. day. Like, how like, often? Who, who would not want to do that for their fucking job? Yeah. Just and not only that, I mean, how often do they make movies about video games? You know, it's yeah. fucking I mean, rare, I mean, man. Yeah, like they, I mean, it did come out with the Wizard. That was like, but that was like yeah, in the that was in the late eighties. Yeah, and so and then you know, of course, there's Grandma's Boy, and I think they're they're like maybe one or two more I can't uh, remember offhand but yeah that was a great film great comedy that's when yes, that's when comedies were really on you know fire back then I remember the one part in Grandma's Boy that really just made me laugh my ass off was the part where he put all the shit in the stove and goes oh, yeah. up like smokes another bowl comes down and he's like and he just fucking reaches in barehanded and he's like, hey, <laughs> time. And he just grabs it. You can instantly hear the sizzle like that. She's like, oh, fucking bitch. God, fucking fuck her ass. He's just like going on like, oh, damn it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of good, uh, a lot of good scenes in that movie for sure. But, oh, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Now we're going to get into some questions here for you, bro. You had a, what was the other movie that you said you watched? Yeah, the, all the Street Fighter films. Oh, that's it? And, and uh, I can't remember offhand. I think 
I got into the Black Panther film. Yeah. Well, one of those uh, Marvel movies, and that one was pretty good too. Not great, but it was good. Yeah. You know. Um, okay. But yeah, let's get into some questions here because there's quite a few. All right. All right. So here, uh, first question here is: um, In 1991, did you own some? Did you own WCW figures? Yeah. Which, I had, you talk about the the rubber ones? Like, yeah, I had Sting, Lex Luger. Um, I think I had Sid Vicious, Ric Flair. Right on. I think I had uh, Rick Steiner, if I'm not mistaken. And I remember having some of those. Back that was at, cool. Like I was well, like I remember when they started coming out with the WCW figures because you know you had WWF figures at the time. Yeah. And when they came out, it's like, oh man, like. You know, like, there's the WCW figures and the Hasbro figures at the time were, like, almost, like, the same size. I was like, man, you could have, like, have the best of both worlds. Like, you could have Sting take on Hulk Hogan or, you know, and, you know, Lex Luger and all that stuff. It's like, hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. I mean, yeah, the figures were cool back then. I didn't have any WCW figures back then. I remember I had a few WWF figures in the like late 80s like, yeah what you have the big rubber ones i had the i had big john stud um yeah. from the from the 80s and he 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 couldn't move he was like you know those yeah, stiff that, figures that, that's, that's how all their figures were back then like they were these big rubber figures but they they were, were stiff as hell like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i'm saying when you know when they later came out with the hasbro figures that you know, you can move the arms and, you know, right. different stuff, do more stuff with them. It's like, yeah, that was cool. I mean, the, the figures, the rubber ones were cool, but it's like, man, like, they didn't really, you know, it can't move them around, you know? Right, right. And also, did you, he's asking, did you own the Lethal Weapon uh, Super NES uh, game? Lethal Weapon? I yeah, I, I, I know you like the films, but did you ever uh, ever play the video game or have the video game? I never even knew about the video game. <laughs> right now. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm being serious. Like, I never even knew Lethal Weapon made a damn uh, video, video game. Video game. Right on. Right on. So yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely I mean, yeah, a no. I was a big fan of the films, though. Oh, yeah. The films are great. The director's cuts are, like, better versions. Yeah. You know? <laughs> For sure, those I, are. I like I liked all three of the like the first three, but I didn't understand like how Mel Gibson and and the first three like knew how to fight, new martial arts and all this stuff like, and then like the fourth one when he fights uh, Jet Li, he just like didn't really seem like he knew how to fight that well anymore. Like he was just like mostly just throwing punches and shit. Yeah. But whatever. Yeah, Still I mean those movie. those films are good though, regardless. Yeah. You know, even with their flaws. Your, I got a question for yeah. you. What's your uh, favorite Lethal Weapon movie? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I I would probably go with the fourth one. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I'm. You know, like you as you know, I'm a fan of martial art films. Jet Li's yeah. in the fourth one. Yeah, yeah. But even would, though the first one's probably the best one, yeah, you know. I would but say to me, the, the the second one, I always seem like I like the best because it was just like I love how they started it off with the damn uh, with that car chase and Mel Gibson. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like hell yeah, I started right off with the car chase. Love it. Hell yeah. Um, okay, so next question here is, uh, do you remember Jameson? It says uh, he wore glasses and a suit. Oh, yeah, I remember him. He, yeah, yeah, I remember that, dude. Yeah. He, he was a character, man. It always came out, like, he dressed in, like, this, like, like ridiculous suit. He wore glasses, like, he was basically a dork. You know what I mean? Right, right. Like... But he always, he had like the taped glasses and he's like, hey, we made it. But um, I remember he, they used him with segments with um, the Bushwhackers at times. 
Right. And yeah, I remember that guy. Hell he yeah. Some, he was funny. And now he's asking, uh, do you recall the uh, 1991 Mountie attacked and shocked the boss man backstage with a taser? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I do remember that. I, <laughs> I remember watching when they when they aired it. Like, um, like they were they were they were supposed to bring the big boss man out on to the wrestling show that they were doing to I think it was what was it prime time or something like that. But they brought him out to talk to him and like they couldn't find him and then somebody would come up and it's like hey somebody just dropped off this tape so that if you want to know what happened to the boss man watch this and they show a camera out in the parking lot uh, a big boss man in a confrontation with Jimmy Hart and like Mountie just comes out of nowhere shocks the shit out of him and they took him and like put him in the back room and when the people finally got to him he just had him like he had him handcuffed and was just like shocking the fucking shit out of him. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. That's and crazy. I, yeah, I was just like, wow, that was. I remember being so. Because, you know, being a kid back then, and you really get in, got into wrestling like I did, like. I remember seeing that, like, man, I wanted to see the big boss man come back from that and whoop his ass. <laughs> like, I was just like, dude, that is so wrong, you know? Right. Like, I mean, it's like that's not wrestling. Like you, I mean, it's literally like you're trying to, you know, either seriously injure the guy, or you're trying to fucking kill him. Right. You know. Right. He's really trying to. Like what? What are you gonna do? Keep shocking? Are you gonna keep shocking him with that stick till he's just done? You know. Right. Um. Let's see here. Also, he's like, uh, in the 90s, did you own uh, WCW magazines? Um, yeah, I believe I had a few of them in, in the 90s. Mm. I remember in, I know in like, uh, what was it? I want to say 96. I remember I found at a store that was on the other side of our town that we used to live in that actually sold the current, you know, WCW magazines at the time, and I remember, like, every month, I was like, I know this store has WCW magazines now, so I'm gonna start coming to this place once a month and getting, you know, the new copies of it. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah. And I would assume that you also had WWF magazines. Oh, of course. I've, I've, I had WWF magazines since back in the remember getting the first one in like the damn 80s or like you know I think it was 87 oh wow yeah I remember my first WWF magazine was like uh, a magazine that had the honky top man with the intercontinental title on, on the cover oh wow that's cool yeah whatever happened to your magazines do you still have any of them or are they gone or? I, I, I think I wound up like I think I either gave them all away to <clears throat> my cousin or I think I sold them or something oh wow too bad you didn't but, have those they might be worth some money yeah I know I, dude there's there's a lot of shit back in the day that I wish I would have kept like I wish I still had my, my Hasbro wrestling collection. Like, yeah. I knew at one point I probably had every, maybe not all at the same time, but in very various times, I had, like, cause I would always trade, you know, figures. Like, I was like, all right, I got a Dusty Rhodes figure. What figure you got? Oh, I got uh, Macho King. All right, I'll trade you, you know? I mean, I bought a few, sold a few, you know, traded a few, this and that. I know at one point I probably had every Hasbro figure. Oh wow, that's cool. I think the only one I really don't remember ever really getting was the Andre the Giant one. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, but let, let's see here. Do you recall the 1992 Owen Hart dressed as Santa Claus for WWF Wrestling Challenge? I have to say, I, I don't remember that. From 92. 
He also said, uh, do you recall the 1994 Wrestling Challenge uh, Gorilla Monsoon dressed as Santa Claus uh, for episode one on one interview? No. Uh, let's see, with Diesel in the studio by Vince McMahon? So that you don't remember? No. Um, What's your okay? Next question. What is your favorite uh, SummerSlam match? He says his is uh, Mr. Perfect from 1991. With Bret Hart. I believe so. Yeah, that, uh, that, that was a good match. That was that started uh, Bret Hart's whole uh, singles run. You know, he won the Intercontinental Title that yeah. day. Do you have uh, what's your favorite SummerSlam match? Ooh, that, that's a good question. What would be my favorite SummerSlam matchup? Yeah, that's a... I, I couldn't even answer that. <laughs> There's so um, many good matches. Yeah, like... I mean, I, I have to say, like, his pick was a damn good pick. and Right. Um, damn. I'm trying to, like, go back right now thinking of all the... Favorite matches. And yeah, you'd have to go all the way back, what, to the 80s, late 80s? Yeah, I mean, saying, I mean, late 80s all the way up to whenever. I'm saying, I'm just trying to think, like, man, what's the one of the best matches at SummerSlam I ever seen? Is there any that stand out for you? Okay, I got one. Yeah. My, my favorite SummerSlam match. Yeah. Razor Ramon versus Shawn Michaels, the the ladder match they had at SummerSlam '95. Oh, kick ass! Yeah, yeah, I do remember that. That's pretty damn good. Yeah, I mean it wasn't as good as people say it wasn't as good as the WrestleMania 10, you know, ladder match. But damn, it was a good ladder match. Oh yeah. Um, next question is, what's your favorite Kane match? Ooh, his, Kane. He says his is uh, Kane versus Triple H from 2001. It's a, a chain match. The night Kane defeated Triple H for the Intercontinental Belt. Yeah. Do you have a favorite Kane match that stands out? I, w I would say it's probably... Hmm. Uh, not really a match, but uh, like I know my favorite storyline that he did was with uh, was against Edge back when you know Lita like basically turned on Kane and went went with Edge and he came out flaunting it like making out with her right in front of him like you know telling him like. He's like, oh yeah, after Vin after this week when, when Edge beat you, we're getting married. <laughs> yeah. They did have um I'll tell you what was funny, they did have a stretcher match with Kane and against Edge where Kane won and then he wound up like tombstoning Lita like on the stage. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah. All right on. Huh? Okay, let's see here. Uh, how do you feel about Sonny going to j uh, prison? Such a waste. Yeah, you know? it, it is pretty sad. It's sad that you know it had that had to happen. Yeah, but sad. you don't. That's one thing you don't do is you don't. I think she took someone out by drinking and driving. Yeah, she was dr she was drinking and driving. Yeah, and she didn't she didn't even have a, a driver's license. But right. it's just I look at it as such a waste because. I mean, when you look back at Sonny back in, like, the mid to late 90s in WWF, there was not probably a guy out there that wouldn't have said that they had a crush on oh, Sonny. Yeah. I, yeah. Know, I, I know I did. Yeah, like, she, I, she was I, awesome I in the 90s. I thought she was absolutely beautiful. You know, and then to see her now, like, and to see all the trouble she's in, it's just, like, it's sad. You know, it's sad to see a woman that you know was like um what did they call her in wwf they called her the most downloaded wwf superstar from the internet at the time yeah 
And I mean, she was like, she was a fucking hottie. You know, and then it's like, you see her now, it's just like, wow. Like, I, I can't believe that's sunny now. Yeah, like, it, it, like, yeah it's, it's crazy. Her yeah, life. They, they showed a picture of her in, in court. Yeah. And she, she had like white hair and she had like, and she, and she looked like she, she packed on so much weight. Yeah, and she looked old and. Yeah, yeah. She, looked, she looked like an old, like, like old woman like yeah we're used to seeing her like young and yeah it's crazy song, she used to come out there too she's like i know you want me i know you want me. yeah i bet you she won't she's not saying that now no 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 it's, it's, I, mean, it's sad. I mean you know it's sad because you know sunny was fucking beautiful and right. see her now it's just like you just hate to see somebody that you really thought was cool to see in that shape now right it's pretty but, but like you say you know when you get mixed up with drugs and alcohol and yeah it's just you like, go downhill man and never dr yeah. never ever ever drink and then go driving that's something that i i'm not no. even, I, I like to you know drink once in a while i'll never drive because that's no. just crazy um yeah. Let's see here. Uh, what did I don't know? What did you think of? Next question here is: What did you think of No Mercy two thousand and two? He says he's he'd rated an eight out of ten. He's talking about the one where uh, two thousand two. Two thousand and two. I mean, I could look it up. If I'm thinking correctly, that was the night that they had a uh, Vince McMahon versus Stephanie McMahon. The father daughter I quit match. I think that was. I could be mistaken. I could look it up real quick here. Yeah. Um, because I don't even remember. <laughs> it's over 20 years ago. Yeah. It has, uh, let's see, Kane is on the cover. Let's see who's in the matches here. Okay. What do we got for matches? Looking this up here. Uh, main event match. Oh, that's it weird. was Brock Lesnar and Undertaker. Yeah, it was Brock Lesnar. Uh, that, oh yeah, that was the infamous bike chain match. Brock Lesnar defeats the Undertaker. Yeah. Um, well, I yeah, the first, yeah, it had uh, Hurricane versus uh, Stephen Richards. Yeah. It, it had Chris Jericho versus Christian. Yeah, that's bad. It had uh, Tori Wilson uh, versus Don Marie. Yeah. Rob that Van Dam. Was, that was a pretty interesting feud in the day. Yeah. Rob Van Dam uh, versus Ric Flair. Okay, that was cool. Jamie Noble. Uh, Jamie Noble. Oh my versus God. Uh, this Japanese guy, and I can't even pronounce his name. Tajiri? Yeah, yeah, Tajiri, that's it. Yeah. The one I always spray mist. And <laughs> we had uh, Triple H versus Kane. Kurt Angle yeah. and uh, Chris Benoit. Uh, they wrestle Edge and Rey Mysterio. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, that'd, be, that'd be a good match. Oh, yeah, that's probably the best fucking match that. on the you card, got, dude. No, think about that tag team right there. You yeah. got Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit. Edge and, cool. yeah. Yeah, and then on the other side, you got Edge and Rey Mysterio. Yeah. And it was a 22-minute match, too, so you yeah. know that was a fucking probably great match. Those guys could probably, you know, the combination of that talent, like, yeah, I mean, that's that, that's cool. But hell yeah, and then let's see, yeah, Trish versus uh, Victoria. Victoria, yeah. Later went on the TNA named Tara, and then the last one, uh, Brock Lesnar uh, versus Undertaker. So. Okay. 
So, I mean, it was way out. So, did it have Stephanie versus Vince? Uh, no, it doesn't say that anywhere. Oh. Maybe that was the next year. 2003, then. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I remember, because I remember they, they had, like, the same kind of main event, which was Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar, but it was a biker chain match. Yeah. Because I, I remember they, they originally announced it as Brock Lesnar versus Undertaker, but then Undertaker came out with a big chain, and he told, like, that I just went to the office and had a meeting with Stephanie McMahon, and, and now our championship match is a biker chain match. And you, you hear Taz just go, like a chain match. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay, we got questions. All right, what we got we for got questions? Um, uh, did you own WWF magazines in the 90s or WWF, WWE Raw, WWE SmackDown magazines in the 2000s? I know I had, I, I would get them in the, in the 90s, but I mean, very rarely did I have any from the 2000s. Like, I got some, like, the, the Raw magazines and stuff like that. Right. But... By then, yeah, I figured by the 2000s, dude, you know, they had the internet up, up and going. And, like, you didn't have to buy magazines. You, you heard all the, everything that was going on right there on the internet. Right on. Um, also, what did you think of Survivor Series 2001? He gives it an 8 out of 10. 2001. I'm trying to think who wrestled. <laughs> I don't even remember myself. I don't yeah. even. I don't even know if I. I don't think I even have that DVD. To be honest. Oh, you know what? No, two thousand one Survivor Series. That was the fucking uh, the war, the WCW ECW alliance against W. That was the final show form. It was a winner takes all match. Okay. It was cool. It had, you know, it had a lot of good. It had a lot of the, like you had. Like all the belts from WCW and WWF at the time, that which was, that's what was cool about WCW crossing with WWF, is because you know they used, you know, you had more championship belts to pass around. Right. Like you know you, they you know they had the WCW US title, the, the WCW tag team titles, the WCW World title. You know, oh yeah, the WCW Cruiserweight title. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Which basically, after Survivor Series, they basically did away with all the WCW belts. Right. But okay. Let's... Yeah, I mean that, that, that was a that was a good show. It was a co cool way to finally it end it in a way like. But I, I wish they wouldn't have ended it. Like I wish they would have kept on with like WCW. Like, I liked it when they first brought WCW in against the WWF, and then later on they brought in ECW, which we think it was going to be ECW against WWF and WCW, like the real main war there. And then you find out that ECW has joined forces with WCW. Right. Which, I mean, was cool, but I'd rather just seem to... Like, I would have liked to seen WCW would have brought in more of their badass talent. Like, like because a lot of people say the WCW that they brought in was like a watered-down... Like, it was just basically all their mid-carters. Right. Like, the only top guys that went over there was, like, Booker T, DDP, you know, Buff Bagwell wrestled there for one fucking event. And then, but I mean, a lot of the other guys, I mean, you had like Hugh Morris, Chavo Guerrero, you had like, uh, like Chuck Palumbo, Sean O'Hare. It's like, these guys, like, it's like, where's all your top guys at? Like, where, you know, if you were brought in like fucking Goldberg and, you know, uh, Kevin Nash, Jeff Jarrett, you know, all them guys. Then you would have had a real fucking WCW and WWF war. Yeah, that would have been fucking awesome. Yeah. 
All right, let's see here. Uh, did you watch? Did you watch live on TV the final episode of uh, Primetime Wrestling from January fourth, nineteen ninety-three? Um, I don't think so. Okay, and what was your reaction on the uh, let's see, nineteen ninety-two WWF Primetime when Vince McMahon was announcing the end of WWF? primetime wrestling in favor of WWF Raw. Oh, say that again? Okay. What was your reaction um, on 1992 WWF primetime when Vince McMahon was announcing the end of WWF primetime wrestling in favor of WWF Raw? Do you I probably don't remember that because I, like... Probably back at that time, I didn't have cable, so I didn't. I don't even think I ever watched the even was there to watch the first event of WWF for all. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Back in the nineties, yeah, I didn't have cable. Gotcha. I mean, it was very rarely that I got to go to like a family member's house and watch like you know the shows that were on cable, like prime time. Um, WCW Saturday Night, you know all those shows. But like the shows I mostly watched was like, you know, like WWF Superstars and WWF Challenge because that those you know shows would come on local TV. Right. Okay. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Right. So. Okay. Um. Let's see here. Uh. Next question is: uh, Do you recall Bret Hart? Versus Ric Flair Iron Man match 1993 Boston Garden. Iron Man match. Right, from January 9th, 1993. Yeah, who was it again? Uh, Bret Hart versus Ric Flair. Iron Man match 1993 Boston Garden. I don't remember that match. Like. Basically, the only match I remember Brett and Rick wrestling the WWF was when Brett won the WWF title. Okay. That would have been probably a badass Iron Man match, though. Okay. Uh, next, yeah. Uh, next question is: What is your favorite WWF venue from the what '80s and '90s out of the Boston Garden? And Spectrum in Philadelphia, Madison Square Garden in New York. Hmm. How about a match? Uh, what's your favorite venue? Oh, like favorite venue? Hmm. From the eighties and nineties, out of the Boston Garden and S Spectrum in Philadelphia. Oh. I don't know about that, but I'm saying I probably had to say a uh, perfect, p cool place was was the Pontiac Silverdome. Yeah, his is uh, Madison Square Garden. Yeah, Madison Square Garden, you know, is cool. I mean, they've you know that's like the WWE's you know grand stage basically. Right. But I mean, if you're talking about venues, like I would say, like some of the old like cooler places in the 80s and stuff was like I said the Pontiac Silverdome mm -hmm. okay next uh, question here is uh, do you recall WWF Spotlight 1990 Hawk and Animal make a power shake for Sean Mooney and Sean Mooney has a bad reaction towards the taste of the shake <laughs> I think I remember that but I remember something like that. I remember some of those skits like that. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. I don't. Th I don't think it was necessarily that one, but I remember I saw one where Mean Gene Okerlund was doing a thing with the Bushwhackers, and they cooked him up like some fried buzzard, and Mean Gene started eating it. Before you knew it, he was starting to like basically turn into a fucking bushwhacker. <laughs> Like, oh, like yeah. and the camera crew's like grabbing, like we gotta get this guy out of here. He's crazy. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay, yeah. let's see here. Uh, next question is: uh, 
Do you recall the, let's see, April 30th, 1994 WWF Superstars when Diesel won the WWF Intercontinental title from Razor Ramon? Yep, I remember watching that. Would you I, I, I remember, uh, I remember, because uh, what happened was Shawn Michaels took a turnbuckle pad off and Diesel at one point threw him into the ropes and he wound up nailing his back right on the, the, the steel buckle and then before you knew it, Diesel hit him with the jackknife power bomb and got the one, two, three. Right on. I liked how they celebrated. Diesel got out. It was like showing Sean and like, I want the belt, Sean. And I was like, yeah. And just like jumped in his arms, like, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Like, Man, what a way to celebrate. But that was cool. When Diesel won the Intercontinental title, I was like, you know, because he, you know, he was being just basically the bodyguard of Shawn Michaels. and Right to finally win you know a championship himself you're like wow this guy is going up there and it's funny that was in like earlier of 94 it's funny by the end of 94 he was WWF champion he won all three championships in less than a year he was intercontinental champion he didn't, you know, team with Sean, they won the tag team titles. And then when he did the face turn after Survivor Series in 94, he had that quick, like, match with Bob Backlund, which they he won the WWF title. Oh, kick ass. Yeah. Okay, let's see here. Um, do you have a favorite Sunday Night Heat episode? And his is, he says his is from January 31st, 1999, Halftime Heat. Oh, yeah, the infamous uh, empty arena fight between The Rock and yeah. Man. Yeah, Rock versus Bad Kai and the yeah, arena that, match. That, I would have to say that was, a, a gr- you know, it was funny. It was just the two of them in empty arena just fighting all over, like, the arena took it backstage. They were... <laughs> I remember at one point, Rock grabbed a Jack Daniels bottle, and he's like, he's like, Jack Daniels, if you please, knock him to his knees. <laughs> so it's like taking a swig of it, and Vince was saying something like, that wasn't real alcohol, by the way. Real alcohol never touches the Rock's lips. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh. I remember Mankind won the match by dropping a, a fucking pallet on a forklift on the rock and just stood on it and basically the referee counted rock out because he couldn't lift his shoulder up. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Uh, next question is, uh, what would you score, what, what is your score on WrestleMania 6? He says he gives it a 7.5 seven out of 10. I agree, that was great. I mean, you know, Hulk Hogan versus the Ultimate Warrior, you know. I remember uh, I remember watching that when it happened years ago with my brother, and he was rooting for Warrior, I was rooting for Hulk, and I remember when, when Hulk lost at the end, I remember, like, my brother was, like, cheering that Warrior won. I'm just sitting there like, <laughs> <laughs> Damn, man. And uh, did you, uh, let's see, did you own WrestleMania 6 on uh, VHS? Oh, yeah. I found it at one of our uh, video stores back in the day. Yeah. I remember, what, where was it? I, I, I went to one video store, and they had, like, a bunch of the events they were selling. And I bought, like, WrestleMania 6, like, SummerSlam 91... Um, I think it bought like uh, 92 Royal Rumble. I, you know, I remember I scored up, and you know, every now and then I would find another event. I, you remember, I had quite the damn wrestling library back in the day. Oh, I remember, man. You had. I had all. Of, I had all those tapes, and I had them all like in order from like I think the oldest event I had on on a tape was WrestleMania two. 
and then from like there to like I, think, I don't remember what it was like the late 90s I had like all the events I had WCW events I had like you know tapes with this Raws and Nitros and WCW Saturday nights and it's just like Man, I had a damn library for oh, yeah. Those were the good times back then, man, I swear. I'd always fill up a tape with, like, a couple weeks, like, with, like, shows, like, Raw, you know, like, like the whole week, like, Raw, Nitro, uh, SmackDown, or, or WCW Thunder, and then plus the weekend stuff with WCW Saturday Night, and, you know, I forgot, uh, WWF Superstars, I don't know, I don't think they had Superstars anymore at that time, they did. I think they had a WCW Saturday Night, not WCW Saturday, though, uh, WWF Shotgun Saturday Night. Right. That was in the late 90s, right? Mid yeah. Mid late 90s. I remember I'd always, la I labeled the tape, like, the week of such and such in 1998, and it'd have, like, you know, like every, like all the shows for that week, and you know, I always have room for the follow up. And like, I'd have like two weeks of like wrestling shows on each tape. Man, that is awesome. Yeah. That's I always cool edited the shit pretty well, too. I always like cut out all the commercials where you just got wrestling. Right. I would have kept those commercials just for the retro feel. You know, of things. But yeah, that's pretty cool to own, you know, all those VHS tapes and then uh, uh, record all those shows every week, man. That was fucking cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's, let's see here. Uh, next question is, uh, what is your favorite Undertaker feud? His is with uh, Mankind, which is pretty good. Uh, dude, there's no better feud that he had out there was was with mankind. Yeah. Like all their matches, they had buried alive match, fucking uh, boiler room brawl match, you know, hell in a cell. Like, uh, shit, they had so many crazy encounters, so many crazy matches. Like, oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously that's that's the best choice, you know, Undertaker, mankind. Oh yeah. Uh, next question here is, uh, do you, what's your favorite Piper's Pit? Um, I'd probably have to say one of my favorite Piper's Pit was. Uh, uh, I like the one where he smashed the fucking coconut on. Uh, what's his yeah. face? Uh, I like the I like the one where where they were setting it up for Roddy Piper and Adrian Adonis at WrestleMania three. Yeah. And they had, like, Roddy Piper was supposed to have, like, George General Steel come out onto his show. And then, like, out of nowhere, Jimmy Hart came out there and was all screaming off at the mouth. Like, I guess, like, Piper had him tied up or something the week before or something happened to him. And he was out there sort of screaming, like, attack, you know, trying to attack Piper. And just as Piper's about to beat the shit out of him. Like, Adrian Adonis ran up out of nowhere. They started brawling, and basically Adrian Adonis put him, Roddy Piper, to sleep sleeper hole. Oh, right on. He put him out, and he shoved fucking, uh, they put, like, just started sticking, like, uh, dandelions or flowers, like, in Piper's mouth. Like, in Piper's <laughs> hole. I like the one with Andre the Giant, where he, he pisses Andre off, and Andre picks his ass up yeah he like he picks his ass up by his shirt and is like hey yeah. what are you talking about yeah then he kind of stumbles over the table or something like that yeah. I, that was a great idea for Roddy Piper to do you know yeah Roddy Piper was a fucking character man. yeah one like, of the best you know, heels ever he, yeah, like, he, he was always a wild one like mm -hmm. when they started doing Piper's Pit like and, you know, whether he worked as a heel or a face at the time, like, he could always cut a, f a great interview. Like, his oh, yeah. promo skills were always pretty damn good. 
Yeah. Do you have a favorite uh, barber shop? Uh, probably the one that uh, everybody always talks about. The one with uh, where Shawn Michaels turned on Marty yeah, Jannetty. He gives him that hell of a kick. Yeah, this kick, kicked him and threw his threw him head first to the uh, the window and yeah. <laughs> Bobby Heenan fucking made great commentary on that. He's like, "Oh, did you see that? He he just tried to jump through the window." The girl is like, "No, <laughs> he did not." <laughs> Do you have a favorite uh, snake pit? Um. Snake pit, snake pit, snake pit. Mm. Um, that's that's hmm. with uh, Jake the Snake, right? Yeah. There, there was a a snake pit. It it was taped. It was filmed. But because of the reaction it got, they did. They never aired it. It was a snake pit with Jake the Snake and Hulk Hogan. Well, if they never right. aired it. How the hell did you see it? Well, because I've heard about it. Like, because they, 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 what they did, they, they did it, but then they reshot it or they edited it to where they cut out the end where uh. Jake attacks Hulk and like DDTs him on the fucking floor, and when you see Hulk get up, his head's all busted open, and like they said the the reaction they got from the fans by it fan, you know where fans were supposed to be booing Jake fans were like the the crowd was cheering it <laughs> was cheering that Jake oh, yeah. you know fucking took out Hulk like that and they're like oh no we can't have that we can't have Jake being cheered against our main star so yeah we gotta either refilm this or or cut it, or edit it, or cut out that part, and just have Jake walk off or something. Yeah. Like, I was like, man, that's stupid. Like, they should, like... But, I mean, it, they did wind up, like... This was before Macho... I mean, not Macho, but uh, Jake the Snake did the whole, like, um, the face turn when he got... When he was in that feud with the Honky Tonk Man. Right. But... Yeah, Jake the Snake, baby. Hell yeah. Um, let's see here. What did you think of the Ultimate Warrior versus Mr. Perfect 1990 Madison Square Garden live event? Um, I didn't really see, see that match, but I mean, from what I did hear about, it was it was definitely better than their SummerSlam match, <laughs> where. Oh, yeah. Who was it again? Ultimate Warrior, Mr. Perfect? Yeah, this is Ultimate Warrior versus uh, Mr. Perfect. For some reason, I thought you were talking about uh, Texas Tornado and Kerry Von Air, but no, Ultimate Warrior. I don't think I've ever seen Ultimate Warrior, Mr. Perfect go one-on-one. Yeah, it was uh, Madison Square Garden, uh, uh, 3 1990 Yeah, I must uh, have missed live, that one. Live event, yeah. He says it was a pretty good match. That's cool. Okay, let's see. I would like to see, like, that would be cool to see Mr. Perfect and the Warrior going one-on-one. -on -one. This Perfect could work with anybody. Perfect can make Warrior, even Warrior, look good. <laughs> okay, next question here. The third. Um, where is Mr. Perfect? Do you recall uh, Matt Hardy versus uh, Rad Redford? Um, the match from September of 1995 Action Zone. Yeah, I was back in Matt Hardy's jobber days. <laughs> yeah, he's real young at that time. Yeah, yeah. I remember Rad Radford. He he um, known as, you know, also known as Louis Spicoli. Right. I was just, I hated the name they gave him because it was like Rad Radford. <laughs> Sean, mm -hmm. Sean Michaels, they were supposed to have a match. Uh, I think they had a match one day, and Sean was getting on him like, "Yeah, I'd be mad too if my mom named me Mike Michaels." <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, he, he had a heck of a career. 
Yeah. Uh, next ma uh, question in here is, uh, what is your rating of Survivor Series 1992? He gives it an 8. Uh, Survivor Series 92? Um, it was a cool event. I would, I would give it a low rating because they didn't have any Survivor Series matches at, at that card. Like, you know, you got Shawn Michaels versus Bret Hart. You had uh, and all these other matches, like, I think it was, that was the event you got, uh, like, Razor Ramon and Ric Flair against Mr. Perfect, the Macho Man, and all this, but you didn't have, like, the traditional Survivor Series matches that you always came to love, like, the four-on-four, -four, you know, you gotta eliminate the whole team. Right. Like, that was the only Survivor Series I really remember that didn't, didn't get no actual Survivor Series matches. Yeah. Let's see here. Do you recall uh, Sid Vicious versus Lex Luger WCW uh, 302 1991? I've seen bits and pieces of it. Wasn't that, wasn't that great. I mean, yeah. Sid Vicious, like Lex Luger, they're two big time wrestlers, but like, you know, they didn't really give like a good, like they just did like power moves and all this. Like, you know, when you see them ever come out there and just like, really just like, yeah, show me, I'm gonna show you something amazing here. Check this out, wow. Yeah. Next question is, are you uh, familiar with WCW play-by-play -play with uh, Scott Hudson? Yeah, I've seen, uh, I think I've seen a little bit of that. I didn't quite care for it. Yeah, he thinks that uh, Scott is uh, very good on the mic to call yeah. WCW action. What was, it, I mean, he was good on the mic, but... Yeah, I remember they made him a commentary part of the team on uh, Nitro. It was just like, dude, you're just better off sticking your steak, you know, deals. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite Hardcore Holly match? Ooh. His is uh, Hardcore Holly versus Al Snow, 1999, uh, St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Oh, yeah, I remember that, that was that was one of the, like, the first ever, like, hardcore matches in WWF where they actually, like, went out and, like, fought outside the arena. Uh, they even, yeah. like, fought to, like, a lake and shit, and I remember Holly won because he rolled, like, Al Snow up in a damn fence. And like it Al Snow could kick out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that that was pretty damn good. Like that was the start of hard, you know, like really of hardcore Holly. Like before yeah. that he was always just simply called like Bob Holly or It was a sp Bob Spark Spar Bob Spark Plug Holly. Yeah, I did not care for Bob Spark Plug Holly. Well, you know, when he first started, they, his name was Thurman Sparky Plug. <laughs> Jeez. It's and like a race car like, game. Yeah, and after that, they kind of like, yeah, that does sound silly. Let's call him Bob Spark Plug Holly. Yeah, and yeah, even that I didn't care for. Yeah. I liked it better when he was just Hardcore Holly. Yeah, when he became Hardcore Holly, when he, like, buzz cut his hair, fucking, you know, showed off his muscles and... Like took on a whole new attitude. It was like, yeah. Yes, sir. His, his, I would have to say probably one of my favorite hardcore Holly matches. I know a lot of people didn't didn't quite like it, but when he finally got his uh, you know main event spot at a pay per view, when he yeah. fought Brock Lesnar. Hell yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, do you recall the uh, Big Boss Man versus Hulk Hogan steel cage match uh, of 1989 uh, Oh yeah, because uh, that was when Hulk Hogan suplexed the Big Boss Man off the top of the cage and uh, pretty much took himself out in the process. 
And like, remember the heat hit the move, and for, like, several minutes, they both just, like, laid there on the mat, like, like, they were both messed up. Yeah, and he says that also, um, the same night, they had the blue bar steel cage at Madison Square Garden. Yeah. The old blue bar cage. I wish oh, they were yeah. stuck with that, but then they change it to where they, it's, like, this little, like, fence cage. Yeah. The blue bars are pretty cool. Oh yeah, I, I I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Let's see here. Um, it says, did you know that Shawn Michaels had the flu on January nineteenth, nineteen ninety seven, WWF Royal Rumble, the night he won uh, his WWF title back from Psycho Sid. I did not know that. I uh, mean, neither. That's some good info there. Yeah, and that that would suck, dude. Can you imagine have to go out and wrestle a match with the fuck sick with the flu? Yeah, I'm sure it's happened many times with wrestlers having to fucking wrestle every damn night, you know? Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, I wouldn't want to be fucking sick. Like, if they say, like, hey, man, this guy's got the flu. Well, we're going to be in the ring wrestling. Ain't he going to give me the fucking flu? <laughs> yeah, right. It's going to pass on. Yeah. Not to others. Yeah, that would suck. Uh, yeah, I'd be like, no, nah, I'm not getting in the ring with him. He's got the fucking flu. Yeah. Thinking that shit. <laughs> I hear you. Uh, let's see here. Are you familiar with Hulk Hogan versus Sting? Uh, 0710 1998 WCW house show non televised. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not aware of that. I'm not aware of that one either. That's cool. I mean, the two of them always working together. They did work together pretty well. Yeah. Um. Let's see here. Did you ever own the uh, WWF Hardcore title DVD or VHS 2001 release? I'm sure you have. Yeah, you, you know what? I think I I have that uh, DVD for you in your uh, collection over here. Oh, right on. Yeah. But did you ever own the like the VHS or? Yeah, I, you... I had the VHS. Uh, I had the, uh, the Stone Cold said so VHS tape. Oh, right on. It says he okay. owns he owns the DVD. Said so he got it for five bucks many years yeah. ago. I think, uh, I think the one I bought for, uh, I bought, I, I think it's still, you know, in the packaging still. I think I only gave, like, two bucks at Goodwill for it. I was like, hell yeah, that's a score there, man. Let's see. Alrighty. Let's see, where I'm looking at the... He says, do you think if the uh, circumstances did not sustain for, like, Owen Hart passing in the fire of nails, do you think that we would have had a, gotten a uh, classic Superstars Blue Blazer action figure and a Nails action figure? I would, I would think so. I think they, I thought they had a uh, figure of nails. I thought they made a Hasbro of them, like. Well, you know, uh, here he's talking about the what the Jakes. Oh, the Jacks figure. Oh, Jacks. Yeah, my bad. Oh, yeah, that would have been cool. It'd been cool to have like a nails and a blue blazer. Yeah, I think that would have been really cool. Yeah, even he agrees. He says it would have been cool. Yeah. Uh. Let's see. All time, Billy. Uh, I think that's about it for. Oh, the questions. Here, oh yeah. I'm trying to look over everything. There's quite a bit here. But I think that's about it. Yeah. No more questions. No more questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. that's good. Uh, right on, yeah. Um, so yeah, I believe that's it for now. Um, yeah, there's a lot of cool questions in there, man. Right on. 
Oh, yeah, about man, old that's... school. It's, it's cool going down memory lane, you know, when he asks questions yeah. about wrestling from stuff from the 80s and 90s yeah. and all that. I know, I mean, like, you know, he, like he was asked about a lot of skits, like, I mean, like I said, as far as, like, skits and stuff go, I didn't really remember much of that, but, like, like, like matches and, you know, certain stuff like that, like, you know, Diesel winning the Intercontinental title. I remember watching that. It was on WWF Superstars. Right on, yeah. Oh, yeah, hell, hell yeah that, that's a, some cool stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's see here. I'm just trying to look over this just to make sure if I mi didn't miss anything. Um, I think I pretty much got them all. But yeah. Um, so I guess we'll go ahead and wrap this one up. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed. That's been another podcast for you people. That was pretty cool. Oh, yeah, that, was, that, was, that was awesome. But uh, anyways... That is it for now, and we're gone. Oh, yeah.